Hello and welcome to another Telair MyPBX video tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be setting up a new IVR. And let's jump right into it. Let's log into our account. Once logged in, we're going to go straight to PBX features on our left navigation bar and press auto attendant and voice menus. By default, your tenant comes with two sample auto attendants, one of which is for the open hours and one is for the closed hours. So in this case, in our demo tenant here, inbound calls are directed to different recordings and different menus based on the hour of the day. So if this business is open, it is going to play our sample open prompt and one that says we are now closed. Let's look at the sample open one and we can review the current settings. Uh, in this situation, we already have uh, what to play and it has a greeting and it has the certain announcement. So let's actually create a brand new one from scratch. So let's say we want to create a new IVR auto attendant for this company uh, when the companies are open. We do not want to use the generic. So we're going to call it a name here, new open. This is the new auto attendant uh, greeting. So what to play? Now we don't have a, we're not going to use the auto generated using command and that will from text generate a audio announcement. So if you don't want to record something with voice, you can simply use the generation tool, but we don't want to use that. We want to use a pre-recorded. Now, if we don't have a voice recording from our media files that was already pre-recorded, we can record one straight from here. Now this is a great tool and gives us two options to record. We can either record one straight from our phone or we can upload a file that's already been uh, created for us, but however, we're gonna use start recording. So this the second option is great if you went to a service provider and recorded your greeting and they provided the files for you. So this is a great option. However, most people are just gonna record it on the fly from their phones. So what we would do here is call it, uh, give it a file name. So we'll call it new IVR and maybe the date. We want to select WAVE as the best quality format. And then it's going to give us the option of certain extensions within our office. So if I want to start recording with extension 100, if I press start recording right here, that extension at 100 rings. It greets me with, please record your message at the prompt. And when you're done, press the pound key. And then I can record my message. So before I hit start recording here, I want to make sure that my I've written down my message and I know exactly what I want to say. Now, once I've recorded that, let's just say that I've recorded and I'm going to use my sample open here. I can now have the navigation uh, directed based on digits. When you call a business and you reach their auto attendant, you basically have all these options. You can press zero through nine plus the star and pound keys that are physically located on a phone. But there's also three other options which will allow us to direct calls based on certain parameters. For example, no input. No input is based on specific parameters. So if I click my options on the top right tab here, it asks me wait for a response and wait for key press. If there is no key press after five seconds, no input will be initiated. So in this case, it's unassigned. Nothing is going to happen. After five seconds, the standard would be repeat menu. And it would repeat this exact phone menu with the recording that's been recorded here. However, in some companies, if no input is put in after five or 10 or 15 seconds, whatever it is you wished, you can actually direct them to a voicemail or you can simply dial a, an extension directly in the system. So we're gonna put repeat voice menu for now. Invalid input means if they've selected an option that doesn't exist in this list here, uh, we can actually play a message that says that is an invalid option. Please listen again and repeat the menu. Or if it's an invalid option, we can do all sorts of things. In this case, the default is play invalid. Now the fax option is very, very rarely used. 
And the option is, if it detects a fax machine calling your main business number, we can actually, you know, disconnect the call right away so it doesn't tie up any of our lines, which we would do hang up. Or we can actually go to a feature code and we can create a feature code that says receive fax and send faxes to a certain email address. So this is a nice feature if you want to allow, uh, have a one number, whether it can be your auto attendant, your business number, and your fax number all in one. The system is smart enough to know if it's a fax. However, here in Canada and US, it is very rare that a business uses one number for both fax and their main business. They usually keep two. So it's very rarely used, but that option is there for you. So in this case, we're gonna keep it as unassigned. Option zeros typically mean go to reception. That's kind of the common standard and best practice. So we would, in this case, go dial extension, and we're gonna use extension 100 as our reception. You know, 100 might be a sales group, in which case we can send them to a hunt list. Uh, and if there's no options listed, that means we haven't created that call group or hunt list or whatever that option might be. We haven't created it yet, and we can always create it and select it here later on. So if we wanna come back to this, we can leave it unassigned, press save, and then create our hunt groups and then come back into our auto attendant and voice menus and then recreate those options. So these options that I'm allowed, I can, you know, most commonly use as dial extensions. In some cases, I wanna send uh, the caller straight to voicemail and I can do so by selecting the extension and it'll go right to their voicemail greeting. Now I do have an option that says voicemail silent. In some cases, your announcement in the auto attendant is going to be a closed message, for example. Hi, you've reached Acmeco. We're currently closed. Please reach us during our office hours or leave a message at the tone. And after that beep, its silent message is going to uh, take you to the voicemail of whatever extension you want. So you might be at 100, but it's not going to play the greeting for that user at 100. So it's kind of a custom way to send a caller into a voicemail box without being played a greeting. So that's a little slick move that you can use with the auto attendant option and send callers to uh, a voicemail straight from your auto attendant. Now, you want sometimes you wanna give your callers outside access to retrieve their voicemails. So the best way to do so is by calling in their main number and they can have an option within the menu that goes check voicemail, which my option is right over here. So that takes me to the voicemail system. It will then prompt me for my extension and my password. So this is great to giving your employees and users external voicemail access uh, for whatever reason if they're not using voicemail to email. Now, option nine is typically used for uh, company directory. Now we have searches by last name and by first name. And this is an automatically generated menu populated by the actual user names that you've programmed in your extension list. So if you have users and you've programmed their full names by first and last, it's going to do all the heavy lifting for you. Now the nice thing is, is when you initialize an extension by creating a voicemail, it's also going to ask you to record your name announcement. The name announcement will confirm with the user while selecting their name options within the company directory. So for example, if I hit number nine and go into uh, this directory and searching for Mike, it's gonna ask me to enter the first three letters of the first name. I will then enter in six, four, five, which is M-I-K, it will find that user. If the user has a name announcement, it will play that name announcement to confirm and then pr it'll prompt me to press one as the caller to go to that mic person. However, if the mic doesn't record his name announcement, it will, however, read out the letters of the person's name uh, based on whatever has been programmed in here. So there is a backup for that and your callers will still be able to identify the caller whether they record or not. It just sounds very s nice when their name announcement's already been programmed there. Now, some of the options you can do uh, through, uh, through the options here is dial extension. You can go to a specific feature code. You can repeat the voice menu 
So star, for example, as you get complex and create multiple menus and submenus, you know, I can say press five for company information. I can click go to menu, which is right over, uh, where is it here? There we go. Go to voice menu. It's gonna give me all the options of the save menus. Now, unfortunately, I only have two in here right now, but I could have created another one that says about menu, and I can see that option here and select it. Now, if, once I'm in that about menu, I can basically record an audio that says to go back to the main menu, press star. So if I was in that menu right now, I would program star to go to voice menu and select my original, oops, not repeat, sorry, go to voice menu and go back to my original main open menu. So that's a way that I can complex build multiple menus and there's no limit on how many you can create and it can bring me back to uh, certain voice menus. So this is a great way to set up navigation. So the star key is a great tool and it's kind of best practice and common, uh, common telecom uh, ideals to use the star key as the back key. So that is how you set up your IVR. Once you have your IVR set up, you're going to want to assign how calls and numbers get there. So if you don't have a time group, so if you don't care whether you're open or closed or specific time hours of the day, you can have all calls just go straight there, and I'll show you how to quickly do that. Uh, in the inbound routes, you can find the number that's available. If it's been assigned, you will not have the option to assign it. So in this case, we're gonna go to a time-based route, and we are gonna go straight to all hours of the day. This is when we can specify if it's only during open hours or closed hours, and we're gonna select from the list. We wanna go to IVR menu, and we will have the options here. Now you'll notice that I also have the option to prepend caller ID and name. This is great to identify uh, whoever is being reached through the auto attendant where this call came from. So for example, if this DID over here is for a sales group, I can prefix the caller ID name as sales so that when I get that call ring, I know that the number the person called was calling my sales number. And I can name it whatever I want here. I can give it one letter um, annotations or I can give it other types of descriptions depending on who they're calling. So whether it's a tech number or support, it'll prefix where that name would be and then it would show the original person's name. Now we talk more about inbound routes and time scheduling in another tutorial video, so please check that one out. And we talk more about uh, inbound routes. So there you have it. That's how you create and manage your auto attendance within the Teller MyPBX system. Thank you for watching and feel free to browse more of our tutorials from the left-hand side of the YouTube channel. Thank you very much.